know who you are, let me show ya Don't know you a star, let me show ya Great is by far, let me show ya Don't know who you are, let me show My name is Officer Hosea, to my left Officer Ezra Today's class is Throne of Grace and Mercy in Christ Throne of Grace and Mercy in Christ All right, first precept, give me John chapter 1 Verse 17, because we got to understand what was the purpose of Christ, the Lord sending his son unto us. Before Christ was the Old Testament, before Christ was the laws of Moses, the law of animal sacrifice. We have to understand now in this new covenant what position God has gave unto us. Go ahead. John chapter 1 and verse 17. Uh-huh. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Read that again for me. For the law was given by Moses. So the law was given unto Moses, meaning what? The laws, the statutes, the commandments. These things came were, and were reinstituted in Israel by who? By Moses. Moses gave us the law of animal sacrifice. Go ahead. But grace and truth but grace and what truth and truth go ahead came by jesus christ so what is that grace and that truth what's the truth first of all give me psalms 119 verse 142 we have to understand what is grace what is truth because for many years we've learned and grew up in christianity and we'll say words key words as mercy grace truth we don't understand these words love sin but in Israel United in Christ, you're going to get the understanding thereof with precept. Go ahead. Psalms chapter 119, verse 142. Go ahead. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. Uh-huh. And thy law is the truth. Thy what is the truth? Thy law is the truth. So the laws of God is the truth. Let's go back to John now. So what is that saying? Both these men instituted the law. For you Christians that did not know, Jesus Christ was about God's commandments. So what is that grace then that did not come from Moses? Read it again. John chapter 1, verse 17. John chapter 1, verse 17. Uh -huh. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So what is grace? It's a particular time frame for us to what? Add the payment, the sum, which is what? Keeping God's laws appear to the Father blameless. You understand? Yes, go back to John now. Now we understand the meaning of what? Grace. Now we understand what's the truth that Christ gave unto us and the grace. Read John chapter 1 again. John chapter 1, verse 17. Uh huh. For the law was given by Moses. Go ahead. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So grace and truth, that grace we understand is what? A time period for us to get ourselves together, apply God's laws, a time period. Why? Because a righteous man falls seven times. You might make a mistake here and there, but in Christ, now you're able to have a time period to what? Get your spirit together for when you're presented before the Father, you can have what? We're going to find out. For you can have mercy for you could obtain that grace because that grace that we're reading about is conditional all right give me hebrews chapter 4 we're going to read at verse 16 hebrews chapter 4 16 hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 go ahead let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. Ah, let us come before. Read it again. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. That's what all of us must say in the spirit. We have to be able to say this in the spirit. Come boldly before the throne of grace. Keep going. So what is that throne of grace? Go ahead. That we may obtain mercy. That we may what? obtain mercy that we may obtain mercy that grace that time period the father is giving us to gain our spirit right to get our spirit right is mercy mercy keep going 
and find grace to help in time of need. Read that again. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, uh-huh. that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So Christ dying on the cross was for us to obtain mercy. But why, from what, though? That's the question. Obtain mercy from what? Give me the definition of word mercy, please. Because this is what we have to do. We have to stop at key words and understand what God is trying to tell us. That throne of grace is mercy. Mercy. Read it for me, uh, officer. Definition of mercy. Mercy. Compassion or forgiveness shown towards someone whom it is within one's power to punish or harm. Ah, to be shown compassion or forgiveness. So that grace, that mercy translates to forgiveness. Forgiveness from what? Forgiveness for what? That's the question now. It says forgiveness shown towards someone whom it is within one's power to punish or harm. Who could punish us? Who could cast judgment? Who could condemn us? God Almighty. So Christ dying on the cross was for us to have mercy, to escape a certain condemnation, to escape a certain judgment that under Moses, we were not given that. Go to uh, read Hebrews 4.16 again. Then we're going to go to Titus chapter 2. Go ahead. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. Uh -huh. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. To find grace in time of need. Titus chapter 2. We're going to go more into that grace. What is grace according to the scriptures? How we obtain that grace? Remember, I said earlier, that grace is not unconditional. It has conditions. It has terms to that grace. Just like when you lay on a rent, right? You lay on your electricity bill. You understand your phone bill. They give you a grace period. They give you a certain time frame to get that sum, that payment, for you could pay the phone company. But that doesn't mean there's no terms for your grace period. Just like if you lay on your mortgage, you call up the bank, you say, oh, you know what, damn, I, I'm going to miss this month, right? Hey, I, can I break up my payments this down to the third and stretch out my mortgage for a longer time frame? Mm -hmm. But that don't mean the bank ain't going to give you certain terms that you got to agree by. Same thing about with the father. Go ahead. Verse Titus chapter two, uh, 2 and 11. Titus chapter 2, verse 11. Go ahead. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation have appeared to all men. For, read that again. For the grace of God. For the grace of God has appeared unto who? All men. Ah, who's that all men? Hmm, we're going to find out. Is that all men? Is that the white man? Which is really the red man? Your friendly neighborhood white man, which is the, the, the uh, his biblical name is Esau, uh, Idumia, or Edom. Or the, or the Chinese man, or the East Indian man. Who's that all men? We're going to find out. Keep going, though. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation have appeared unto to all men. Go ahead. Teaching us. So these are the terms to, for us to obtain mercy. This is the, ter the terms for us to pay that sum, for we could obtain that throne of grace. Teaching us, go ahead. That denying ungodliness. We have to deny ungodliness. What's that? Keeping God's laws. What's ungodly? Adultery is ungodly. Thievery is ungodly. Whoremongering, ungodly. Go ahead. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust. What's the lust of this world? The lust of this world tells the sisters to dress immodest. You got the lust of your eyes. You got many type of lusts now. Go ahead. We should live soberly, uh -huh. righteously, Go ahead. and godly in this present world. In what? In this present world. No, no, no. During the, during the biblical ages. Present world. Right now, we got to establish God's laws. 
So what is the Christian saying that the laws of God is done away with? I'm in grace. If you're outside of God's laws, you are outside of grace. You are outside of mercy. You will not obtain that throne of grace. Those are the terms to the agreement. Those are the terms to the contract in Christ. Because what? Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. You understand? Give me Zechariah now, 12. We're going to establish who's that who. Who's that uh, all men? Remember, it said all men. Grace has appeared unto all men. We're going to find out. Maybe we're going to read in the Old Testament. Yes, see if it changed. In the Old Testament, maybe maybe it changed in the New Testament. Go ahead. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10. Go ahead. And I will pour upon the house of David. Go ahead. And upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem. A pour upon the house of David. Who's the house of David? The, tw the, 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 the tribe of Judah, which is known now as the African Americans today, living in North America. Go ahead. And upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem. The upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Who is that talking about? The rest of the tribes. So we're reading about the 12 tribes being poured what? The spirit of grace. So the spirit of grace, mercy, to be able to obtain forgiveness of your sins were given to who? Read it again. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Uh-huh. The spirit of grace and of supplication. And of supplication. Keep going. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced. So let's go to Acts 13 now. Let's find out that grace. We understood what's the audience of grace. It was already prophesied in the Old Testament. We read the uh, audience. It was who? The 12 tribes of Israel. The house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Who is, who, who is that today? You blacks and Hispanics. You Native Americans. We are the vessels of mercy. We are the only ones that could obtain that forgiveness. Why? Because to, have, to seek forgiveness, that means you have to be at fault. To be at fault, that means you had to be held obligated. Meaning, told something. Who was told the commandments? Right. You have to be held accountable. Who did the Lord give the commandments to? Was it the white man? Was it the Chinese man? Oh, no, it was not. It was you, Israelites. It was you, black and Hispanics and Native Indians. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, yeah I want Acts chapter 13, verse 23. Acts. Chapter 13, verse 23. Go ahead. Of this man's seed have God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a Savior, Jesus. Hold up now, hold up now, hold up. Let me get it, let me get it. Read that again, verse 23. Of this man's seed have God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a Savior, who's Jesus. That, who's that this man? Read verse 22. Verse 22. Go ahead. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king. Uh-huh. To whom also he gave testimony. Go ahead. And said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Go ahead. Of this man's of seed. David's seed. That's very important. That's saying Christ had a father. So that means he came from the loins, right? Of King David. L that's literally saying he came from the testicles of King David. His lineage. We got to be blunt. We got to be blunt here. So what is the Christian church? That's why the Christian church, their whole spirit is off when it comes to this Bible. They uh, do not accept the fact that Christ had a physical father. They are in denial of thus saith the Lord. Keep going. Of this man's seed have God, according to his promise, mm -hmm. raised unto Israel a Savior, Jesus. So the, this man is King David. Jesus had a father. You understand? And Jesus is the Savior unto who? Raised unto who? Israel. Unto who? Israel. Who? Israel. No, the Chinese man. Israel. 
the white man. Israel. What about the Hawaiian man? Israel. What about the the Hermetic man? Israel. Israel. The only people that could obtain that throne of grace, that forgiveness of sin, that mercy, is Israel. You black and Hispanics. You Native Americans. Keep going. When John had first preached before his coming the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. Jump to verse 34. So now we understand, even in Acts, the time of the apostles, who was the audience that could receive grace? You Israelites. So what's the Christian church saying? Old Testament, the audience, the receivers of grace is the Israelites. New Testament, this is the apostles now. The Israelites are those, are those vessels of mercy that can walk up to the throne of grace. What is the Christian church talking about? Please. Read verse 34. John chapter 13, verse 34. And ask Acts, Acts chapter 13, verse 34. And as concerning that he raised him up from the dead. Now no more to return to corruption. He said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. Mm. Now we reading about God is elaborating on that throne of grace. He's elaborating on that grace and truth that Christ came. It said, read it again, the sure mercies of who? The sure mercies of David. That's for us today. That's for you Israelites. The Lord has bestowed upon us the spirit of supplication, the spirit of what? The mercies of David. So we got to look in the past. What forgiveness, what mercies was King David uh, bestowed? What crime did King David commit for he could uh, obtain Mercy, because the only way you could obtain mercy is is what? You're a, you're a sinner. You're a criminal. You're a spiritual criminal. We're going to hit that later on. Keep going. I will Remember that, Israel, the mercies of David. That's what he gave us. We're going to touch that in a minute. Uh, keep going. Verse 35. Wherefore, he saith also in another psalm. Thou shalt not suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Uh -huh. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell on sleep. Uh -huh. Keep Jump to verse 38 now. Verse 38. Go ahead. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren. Go ahead. That through this man. Through Jesus Christ, who came from the loins of David. He came from King's David lineage. Keep going. Through this man is preached unto you. This man that came from the lineage of David, we gotta, I got to keep saying that. Because the Christian church, they stuck on immaculate conception. We got to keep stressing that. This man that came that was born of a man. That's what it's saying. Keep going. Through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. Uh-huh. And by him... All that believe. So now it's elaborating, right? Now we're getting into the meat of the, of the matter. Through Moses gave us what? The law. But Christ gave us the law too. But now it's elaborating on what, what, what fell short under Moses, what Christ instituted, instituted now. What is that grace, that forgiveness under Christ? Keep going. And by him. All that believe are justified from all things. Go ahead. What are those all things? Go ahead. From which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. By the what? Law of Moses. So Christ came for we could obtain mercy for acts, for certain crime, for certain sins. You will not be able to obtain mercy for under Moses. That's that throne of grace. That's that mercy. You understand? Now what? Now we have to go to the law. Uh-oh, that's what the Christian church hate, the law. It always goes back to the law, family. 
It always goes back to the law. We have to look at the law of Moses to understand what did we fall short of. Now, before we get that, give me Acts 13. Excuse me, not Acts 13, Hebrews 10. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. That's 101, right? Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. Yep, 26. We're going to elaborate on that law of Moses. What are those all things that we uh, have forgiveness under Christ, but not under Moses? Keep going. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. Uh-huh. For if we sin willfully, after that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. Meaning what? Now you understand that you're an Israelite. Now you understand you have to keep God's laws. You understand the terms for you to have forgiveness when you before the Father. It's conditional. You understand now you have to keep the laws and the faith of Jesus Christ. It's two, you, you need both of those things. But the Christian church, they stuck on that faith of Jesus Christ. They stuck on that grace, but they forgot that. And truth came from Jesus Christ in that John chapter one. Read that again. For if we sin willfully after that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. Uh huh. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Go ahead. 27 is the main point. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, mm -hmm. which shall devour the adversaries. 28 now. This is what I want. 28. Go ahead. He that despised Moses' law uh -huh. died without mercy. Died without what? Mercy. Under Moses' law was no what? Mercy. There was no mercy for what? Keep going. Under two or three witnesses. So under the law of Moses, you had no mercy. Mercy from what? If you committed murder, what the law said, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. The judgment was what? No repentance for you. You cannot seek forgiveness. You have to die to death. Fornication. You understand? If you slept with a woman on her menstrual, what was the judgment? Death. If you committed adultery, death. If you was a witch, death. Many of these sins we are guilty of. That's why the Lord said what? We are the mercies of who? David. David committed some of those crimes that I just listed. Let's get, now let's go to the law of Moses. Let's go to Leviticus 20. We're going to go into two examples now in the law of Moses, right? In the commandments that you was not bestowed mercy. There was no place for forgiveness if you committed this crime, if you broke this law. Okay, read that when you got it. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 13. And if a man lieth with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. Uh-huh. They shall surely be put to death. Read that again. If a man also lieth with mankind uh -huh. as, as he lieth with a woman. Meaning what? If you was a homosexual, right? There's a lot of, there's a lot of that now. They say that that's a lifestyle. Two men ru uh, uh, rubbing each other rods. How does that produce life? Sword Lord have mercy. Sword fights. Sword fighting. How does that produce life? Now, we're not saying they can't repent. Under Jesus Christ, you can repent. But if you stay in that sin, there's no mercy for you. There is no grace for you. You can only have grace when you keep God's laws. Forgiveness for your sins, right? That, uh, if else, you will be put to death. You can only obtain that mercy keeping God's laws. So if you're a homosexual, just repent. Sin no more. Sin no more. But keep going. Both of them have committed an abomination. Both of them have committed an ab uh, abomination. Go ahead. They shall surely be put to death. What was the judgment under the law of Moses? Be put to death. That's what it means as no mercy. There was no room for certain, for mercy for certain sins. If you was a homosexual, you had to be put to death. You had to be. Give me uh, verse 10. 
Same chapter, verse 10 now. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 10. Go ahead. And the man that committed adultery with another man's wife. Uh-oh. A lot of brothers, right? Growing up, we try to be that, that ladies' man, right? Every R&B song. Huh? Every R&B song. Right. Every R&B song is about what? Adultery. Sleeping with a man's wife. Some of us in here is guilty of that thing. Some of us in here is guilty of turning a woman into a harlot. Some of us up in here is guilty of fornication. You understand? But through grace and mercy, when we apply God's laws, the Lord will forgive us. But yes, keep reading. What's the judgment for adultery? Go ahead. Even he that, co that committeth adultery with his neighbor's wife. Go ahead. The adulterer and the adulteress. Both of them. The adulterer and the adulteress. Keep going. Shall surely be put to death. Shall what? Surely be put to death. No mercy. No grace. No forgiveness. No throne of grace. Death. That was the law of Moses. You understand? That's why Christ had to come. Why? For us today that are raised as niggas and spicks. We raised as niggas and spicks. We raised in sin and evil. A lot of us was not born with the laws. We have, a lot of us have what, committed certain sins that are guilty of death. If it wasn't for Christ, all of us will be put to death. If it wasn't for us, we'll have no way to obtain mercy, repentance. That's the importance of Jesus Christ. Without him, there's no way to the Father. We'll be living, Deuteronomy 28, verse 15 down, forever and ever, until the extinction of the black man occurs. Uh, where we at? Give me numbers, 35. Last example about the, uh, a certain crime if you committed, right? You broke this law. There was no mercy. Numbers 35. Give me verse 16. We're going to go into murder, right? Because these are the things that plague our community. Everybody want to be a ladies' man. But guess what? When you that adulterer, when you that fornicator, that whoremonger, you putting your seed in all these different women, right? What what you what you what what type of spirit you think you promoting in here? You understand in our nation now that child most likely gonna grow without a father, right? Now that that child, he's looking for a place of a father figure in his life. Most most times, what the kid go to a gang. He seek he has a hole of a father figure that he tries to fill with other men around him, and those other men are what criminals drug dealers that's what your sin of adultery promotes it breaks up the family it breaks up the nation it's a chain you understand keep going now we're going to go into murder numbers chapter 35 verse 16 uh-huh and if he smite him with a instrument of iron so that he die he is a murderer the murderer shall surely be put to death. Ah, if you was a murderer, if you were, if you was a gangbanger and you got bodies on you, there was no under the law of Moses, there was no room for you to repent. There was no way for you to seek forgiveness. A lot of us are guilty of that. A lot of us are guilty of that. This is the severity in Jesus Christ. Christ dying for us for we can have forgiveness of sins is a very important thing. Without that, there's no throne of grace for us to present ourselves before the Father. Now you got all these rappers, these drill rappers, promoting that violence right there. Promoting uh, 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 murder, thievery. Keep going. Where we at? Read that again for me. Numbers chapter 35, verse 16. Uh -huh. And if he smite him with an instrument of iron so that he die, mm -hmm. he is a murderer. Go ahead. And the murderer shall surely be put to death. And the murderer shall surely be put to death. Let's go to uh, 2 Corinthians now. All right. No, sorry. Let's go back to Acts 13. 
Acts 13, 38. So guess what? If you're a murderer, you're an adulterer, you're a harlot, there's forgiveness for that. If you keep God's laws, that's the grace and truth that Christ instituted in Israel. Keep going. Acts chapter 13, verse 38. Uh-huh. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. Uh-huh. And that, and by him, all that believe are justified from all things. What are those all things? We read some examples. Homosexuality, murder, you understand? Adultery. If you committed some of these sins, there's many more. If you broke the Sabbath day, how many of us broke the Sabbath day? If you broke the Sabbath day, I know I wasn't born keeping the Sabbath day. When the brothers told me about this, the law on the Sabbath, I said, what's that? How you do that? What's the Sabbath? Some of us don't even know the, the number of the days on the calendar for Lord have mercy. You understand? Read that again, verse uh, 39. Verse 39. And by him all that believed are justified from all things. Are what? Justified from all things. Justified from all things. All things that what? You cannot have forgiveness or mercy for under the law of Moses. But it says justified. Give me Isaiah 45, 25. It says justified. Hmm. Who's that justification for? Who's the audience? Yes, see. Yes, see. Who's the, who is justified or shall be justified? Right? Maybe, maybe uh, it changed. Right? Maybe we don't know who's the justified. Because the justified would have been who? The children of Israel. Because the Lord said in verse 23, of this man's seed have God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel. So Israel's that justified. But give me Isaiah 25, uh, for, excuse me, 45, 25. Huh? Mm -mm. 25, right there, yep. 25, 45, 25. Go ahead. Isaiah chapter 25. Isaiah Who are the justified 45. of God? Isaiah chapter 45, verse 25. Go ahead. In the Lord shall all the seed of Israel be justified. In the Lord shall all the who? Seed of Israel be justified. Ah, only the Israelites can receive justification, mercy, forgiveness for sins. Why? Why? Give me Psalms. You know what I want? One. 47, 19, and 20. Why? Because only the laws was given unto who? The children of Israel. That's why only the Israelites can fall short and be justified, atoned, mercy, grace. These, all these words are what? Synonyms. Because the Bible is only talking about one thing unto one group of people. Keep going. Where we at? Psalms. Go ahead. Psalms, chapter 147, verse 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob, uh -huh. his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Go ahead. He have not dealt so uh -oh, with he has, any nation. He has not dealt so with any nation. He has not dealt so with any nation. Meaning what? Only the Israelites could become a criminal, spiritually, a spiritual criminal. You're a, hem you're a heavenly criminal. That's what it means to be a sinner. You broke God's laws. You trespass, trespassed against the law. Meaning what? You're a criminal in the eyes of the Lord. So just like as you would in this land, right? You break a law. You have an attorney, right? What's the, what's the other one? You got the prosecutor, which is Satan. And you got the attorney or the high priest. The high priest's job is to what? To... Judge. Judge, right? And institute the, the instruments, right? Commit, um, uh, make the, uh, kill the sacrifice for you can have what? Atonement or justification for that sin. Who's our high priest? Who's our attorney? Our spiritual attorney? Jesus Christ. 
Jesus Christ. Mediator. Right. He's our mediator. Thank you. He's our mediator. Where we at? Let's go back. Let's go back. Acts 13. And 38. Uh, 39. Read 39. Yep. Acts chapter 13, verse 39. And by him all that believed are justified from all things, from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. Uh huh. So notice how it calls that justification. What did it what did the Lord, the apostles, call that justification in verse 34? Read 34 again. Verse 34. Go ahead. And as concerning that he raised him up from the dead. Mm -hmm. Now no more to return to corruption. He said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. Ah, it called that justification the mercies of David. Why? What crimes did King David commit? When you read in the history, what? He slept with Uriah the Hittite's wife. That's adultery. That's adultery. You read in the law, what's the judgment for adultery? Death. Death. You understand? He could not only did he sleep with his wife, but guess what? He got Uriah put to death. He put him in the heat of the battle. Yeah, he set him up. He set him up to get killed. That's murder. Uh-oh. What's the judgment? Death. But was King David put to death for his sins? No, he was not. But he went through hell. The Lord said what? The, the sword will not depart out of your house. He went through hell. That's like he, Go ahead. he pled to a lesser offense. Exactly. <laughs> you plead, you're right. He pleaded to a lesser offense. You, like, you catch a speeding ticket. You go to the before the judge. The judge might say, have mercy, right? And be like, oh, depending if you got a lawyer. You know, the courts here, it's the same way before the father. You only get it going to be bestowed mercy if you got a lawyer. You understand? Same thing in the heavens. You go before Esau and his judge uh, and his jury, right? You don't got no lawyer, man. It's case closed. Especially if you black, black, not black shine. Woo! Case, case closed. You understand? But when you bes uh, before... Esau's uh, courtrooms, right? His jury, his judge, right? His prosecutor, right? If you don't have a lawyer, you, yo, you, you gonna, you gonna have to eat that. But if you got the lawyer, the lawyer gonna be like, I, right, hey, this is his first offense. Uh, uh, this is his first time. He's a good guy, good kid. He does, he helps out in youth charity, did all these different things, community service and charity. Charity. They'll bring out your whole resume. He's a father, such and such. He gives alms. He gives alms. You understand? Same thing in the heavens. The law will be like, hey, you know what? Hey, such and such. Yeah, he was a murderer. He was an adulterer, right? But guess what? Now he's a father now. He's a husband. He's an upstanding citizen. He's a leader. He's a father to the fatherless in Israel. He's turned many lives to repentance. He's changed his life. He hasn't committed those sins since such and such date. What's going to happen before the judge? All right, yo, charges dropped. Boom. That's, what, that's the throne of grace that we hoping for, to be forgiven for our sins that we have committed excuse me, that are worthy of death. That's the grace and truth by Jesus Christ. Where we at? Finish that up. Verse, uh, what I told you again? 34. Go ahead, read that again. And as concerning that he raised him up from the dead, now no more to return to corruption. Uh -huh. He said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. So the Lord is calling us, the sure mercies of David. We have been bestowed those mercies. Isaiah 55, verse 3. Isaiah 55, verse 3. Go ahead. Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 3. Uh-huh. Yes, see if, if 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 this is 
of their own accord. Because remember, the prophets, the apostles, they always use the old, they, they base their teachings off the Old Testament. There is no such thing as a New Testament if there is no Old Testament or the First Testament. Keep going. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 3. Incline your ear and come unto me. Uh -huh. Hear or hear and your soul shall live. And I will make you an everlasting covenant with you. Even the sure mercies of David. Ah, the Lord said that what he will bestow unto us, right? I will make an everlasting covenant with you, with the children of Israel. We already read the audience. Who's the justified? Who's the vessels of grace? Who Christ died and came from King David for? You understand? The, out of the lineage of King David, Christ came to be a savior to Israel in Acts 13. We already know that. We already know who's the audience here in Isaiah 55. But it says, read that bottom part again. And I will make a cov an everlasting covenant with you. Ah, that everlasting covenant is what? The covenant under Christ. Why? Because the covenant of the law of, under the law of Moses was what? Dismissed. It came to an end. So that everlasting covenant is what? Jesus Christ. What does he call that everlasting covenant now? Keep going. Even the sure mercies of David. Ah, that everlasting covenant comes with the sure mercies of David. Why? Why? Meaning what? Repentance. Repentance. Conversion. Give me Acts. Everybody knows this, but we got to go over it. Acts 3, 19. That's talking about what? Repentance. To have the sure mercies of Moses, uh, excuse me, David. Meaning what? You committed certain sins, but guess what? You changed your life now. No longer are you that, that uh, murderer, that gangbanger, that adulterer, that thief, that witch, that idolater. But now what? Your father now. Your husband now. You're not no baby daddy, you're a husband now. You're not no baby mama, but you're a wife. That's the show mercies of David. You understand? To be forgiven of sins. Keep going. Yes, sir. Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted, uh -huh. that your sins may be blotted out. And when times of the ref of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So conversion, right, means to what? To repent. To repent. Just like you have a drop top, that's a convertible. Is a, it goes from a sedan to a drop top, right? You have to change from that whoremonger or that murderer, right, to now you're a brother's keeper. You got the most charity in the school, but you used to, you used to, yo, you had bodies, right? You understand? That's repentance. Think about that. You go from being a murderer, you have bodies in the street. Now, if a brother's in need, you'll go out your way and show that charity. Saving souls. You see, right. Now you're saving souls instead of taking life. Go to, uh, we're going to have to uh, speed this up. Go to, um, real quick. Give me Acts 8. We're going to go to Acts 8. We're going to show an example of someone in the scriptures who changed their life. We have the greatest example, right, of the sure mercies of David. We have the apostle Paul, who was known as Saul at one time. Let's read some of the acts, the actions that Saul committed. Acts 8. Acts chapter 8, verse 1. And Saul was consenting unto his death. And at the time, there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And, and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions hold, of Judea. Hold up. Who just died that Saul is consenting his death? Who just died? Read verse chapter 7, verse 59, quick. 
Acts chapter 7, verse 59. Go ahead. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus. So they my stoned spirit. Stephen. Saul was hype. He was lit. He's like, yo, Stephen died. Thank God. A follower of Jesus Christ died. Thank God. Saul or Paul was among that number of men, right? That puts uh, Stephen to death. Had Stephen stoned. Think about that. That's some, that, that, that's, yo, that's some evil stuff. That's like us up in here, right? They may be a brother outside, right, that don't know he Israel yet, and he see us purple and gold. He might think we the devil, and he put one of us to death. That man can still have forgiveness. That's the greatest example of mercy. Keep going. And Saul was consenting unto his death. Uh-huh. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea, Samaria, except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial. We jump to chapter 8, verse 3 now. Verse 3. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church. Damn, he made havoc. Saul was no joke. Paul was no joke. He was willing to get his hand dirty. Keep going. Entering into every house. And hauling men and women committed them to prison. He threw the believers of Jesus Christ in prison. That's like we got a brother, right? Let's say he working with the feds or whatever the case may be, right? And he sees certain of us in here. He press charges. He throw us in jail. You feel what I'm saying? Somebody that throw the believers in, of Jesus Christ in jail. Lock him up. Give him hell. It said he caused much havoc. But guess what? Saul received mercy when he repented and became Paul. That's the thing. That's the soul mercies of David. Repentance. To be forgiven of crimes that you are guilty of death. Repentance. Going from that baby mama to that wife. That baby daddy to that that uh, father, turning from Saul to Paul, right? Or Tyrone, right, to Isaiah. Or Daquan to Zechariah. That's repentance. If Paul did it, guess what? We can too. Keep going. Where we at? Jump to verse... Uh, Sorry, go to jump to chapter 9, verse 1. Acts chapter 9, verse 1. Go ahead. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, uh -huh. went unto the high priest. Go ahead. And desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any. So he threatened the believers, those that kept the commandments, he threatened them to put them to death. Slaughter. You know what's a synonym for slaughter? Genocide. You understand? Great death. Go ahead. And desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. And suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. That's it. That's it. We're going to get into that. Uh, uh, we don't got enough time. But give me uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17. So now we read some of the actions, right? The actions, the deeds, the crimes, right? The sins that Saul committed. But guess what? Was Paul, did he receive forgiveness? Oh, yes, he did. Oh, yes, he did. Go ahead. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. This is an example for us. This is for us right here. Go ahead. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, Go ahead. he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Meaning what? All the, all the things that, all the sins, the crimes, 
that you would have been guilty of in the law of Moses, those things is passed away. Those things are forgiven. Those things are justified through the death of Jesus Christ. But it's justified by what? By you repenting that conversion. There's no forgiveness if there's no that conversion right there to go from Saul to Paul. You cannot get the sure mercies of David without that conversion. Those are the terms to the agreement of grace. Keep going. Read that again. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Uh -huh. Old things are passed away. Uh -huh. Behold, all things are become new. All things have become new. You're a new man. All those deeds, all those actions, those sins that you've done worthy of death, let them things go. Let them go. You know, a lot of sisters usually over in the truth with baggage. You 50 years old and you still on. When you was uh, nine years old, you got touched. Sister, let that thing go. Let that thing go. You're a new creature in Christ. You understand? What I, wh wh whatever the sister you was, same thing with the brothers, right? Whatever man you was before this entering this truth, let that man go. You got to put, guess what? Guess what? Paul put Saul to, de to death. He put him in a coffin. You got to let the, you got to let that man you got to uh, 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 put that man to death. But daily, though, you got to die daily. Keep going. Mm -hmm. therefore, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Uh -huh. Old things are passed away. Go ahead. Behold, all things are become new. All things are become new. Now you became that Isaiah, that uh, Zechariah. Same thing for the sisters. You become that Rebecca. No, you, you no longer Shanene. You no longer that thought from the block. You no longer, uh, uh, give me some names, man. Shanene, you feel what I'm saying? Like, uh, 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 you know, man, help me out, man. Uh, but now you what? <laughs> you Rebecca. You a Sarah. You a Judith. You're an Abigail. You're a Deborah. That's repentance. To have the ability to, of that conversion, we got to thank the most high. Because why? We all, all of us is new in the spirit of Christ, though. We all have been bestowed forgiveness if we keep the commandments. Go to uh, Wisdom of Solomon 7.27. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 27. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 27. We're going to read about wisdom. Keep going. Go ahead. And being but one, she can do all things. But being but one, she can do all things. Who's that she? Read verse 24. Verse 24. Uh -huh. For wisdom is a more moving than any motion. So that she is wisdom. Why does it call wisdom? Why did King Solomon call wisdom she? Referring to a woman. Because why? A man loved nothing more than what? A woman. You understand? So that's why he called it. He called wisdom. He was relating to wisdom as a woman. Because a man loves nothing more than a woman. Go ahead. Verse 27. Uh huh. And being but one. She can do all things. Go ahead. And remaining in herself, she maketh all things new. She Hold up now. She maketh what? All things new. Wisdom has the ability to what? Maketh all things new. Justification, forgiveness, mercy. New creature in Christ. All things, right, are passed away. All, all things, meaning all sins or, or crimes that you've committed, or passed away. You got to let that baggage go. You understand? Now go to Philippians chapter 3, 
verse 13. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. We're going to close it out right here. So in our conversion, right, us keeping God's laws to seek forgiveness, that mercy, us in that process of, be, of converting from Saul to Paul, right, we have to let that old man go. You don't think those thoughts bothered Paul of the actions that he did? The men he had put to death? The men and women he threw in jail? You don't think when his eyes was opened in repentance, he didn't feel guilty? A lot of us in here, we feel guilty of certain things that we may have done. That made him go harder. Right, that made him go harder. Why? Because he has to go that much harder to seek to, to obtain forgiveness. You have to use that as fuel to the fire. Damn, I did so much damage. Yo, I got to do twice as much recovery. I got to do twice as much healing. That's the mindset we got to have. Go ahead. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. Go ahead. I count brethren. Any of us, right, any of us holding on to our sins, right, that we have done, that are guilty of death, this is for you right here. Go ahead. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. You heard what Paul said he does? He said, I for, I what? Forgetting those things that are what? Which are behind. Let that old man go. Let that old woman die. Put that man, put that woman to death. Same way as Paul did. He put Saul to death and was what? A new man in Jesus Christ. We cannot look back. Read that again. Forgetting those things which are behind uh -huh. and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Which are before us. What's that new man, right, that new thing that we see which is before us? It's going to let us know. Go ahead. I press forward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So that's that. Th those are the things that we're reaching for forward to. I press toward the mark of who? Of Jesus Christ. We always have to press and look forward the mark of Jesus Christ. Never let the actions of that old man, of the sins that you've done in your, uh, before your repentance, weigh you down. Paul said what? But this one thing I do. Why? Why he said that? Because he had the same thoughts that some of us might have of what? His sins weighing him down. But what? He repented. He taught many in Israel. When you read the gospel, the New Testament, the gospel, most of the New Testament was from who? Was written from who? The letters was written from who? From Paul. Why? That, 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 uh, uh, just like what you said, right? The damage, that guilt. You understand? It turned into what? Fuel to the fire for repentance. You understand? So what? We got to press toward the mark of Jesus Christ to be what? A perfect man, a perfect woman in Jesus Christ. So we're going to close. Let's go back to Hebrews 4.16. Time up. All right, I'm going to close it right here. Hebrews, Hebrews 4.16. We're going to close it right here. Hebrews 4.16. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. So how we do that? By keeping God's laws. By putting that old man, that old woman to death. That's the terms of the agreement. Go ahead. That we may obtain mercy. How we obtain mercy? By keeping God's laws. That mercy is for who? Israel. Those that are what? Justified. Go ahead. And find grace 
to help in time of need. That's it. So that's the class Israel, most high in Christ, bless. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.